while I'm in the kitchen this afternoon, I decided I was going to cook a little bit, and I've started my camera twice. Phone rang the first time, the second time somebody was at the door. So I had to back up and start over again. Let's hope I don't get interrupted this time. Now, first of all, if you see that, notice that beam from above coming down on my head. It's not a heavenly beam by any means. It's the light at the kitchen ceiling. One of the light bulbs went out. My uh, globe was broken. So that bright light is beaming down on top of my head. So I don't want you to think that it's something spectacular happening to me. It isn't. So I'm going to make cornbread for you today. I had put on some beef and uh, carrots and onions on in my slow cooker. I didn't put potatoes in with it because I'm going to make another dish with potatoes, and I'm going to show you that later. Now, here you see me with my J-Dot bowl. Martha Stewart can use J-Dot for her cooking show, so can I. All right. When it comes to cornbread, you're going to hear more times than you can count. People saying, oh, you never put sugar in cornbread. Don't listen to that. I've been making cornbread since I was 18 years old and I've been putting sugar in it ever since then. My mother, I call the master cook. She cooked for a house full of people. She started cooking when she was 12 years old. I never saw her burn anything on the stove. I burned something every week. She was a master cook. She could fix anything. And nobody made better cornbread than my mother. So I use her recipe. Now, first of all, she used to make the cornbread from scratch. Well, you know what that means. And then cornmeal came along. Whoa, now I'm, I'm for shortcuts, you better believe. I'll, I'll take a shortcut anytime. So the cornmeal came on the market and you can get whatever brands you want. Pillsbury, Martha, uh, Martha White, let's see, uh, Weisenberger, there are others. And they're all pretty much the same to me. But like my mother, I had a favorite. It was called Three Rivers Mill. That's the only kind I would buy to make my cornbread. And then one day I couldn't find it anymore. It wasn't on the shelves in the grocery. What happened? Did the, did the store just discontinue it or did they go out of business? Well, I think they went out of business. And that was very disappointing to me because cornbread would never taste the same again without Three Rivers Mill. So anyway, what I'm using today is Martha White cornmeal mix. Now we're going to start off. Got it. I keep this in my refrigerator, this container right here. Let me see if I can get this open. And we're going to pour about, I'll use this measuring cup. It holds a cup. That is one cup. And I'm going to add a little more. Ordinarily, one cup's all I would need for myself. Whoops. I don't need all of that. Don't think. Well, we might need it. Okay, we'll see cup and a half is what I'm going to tell you to use. Cup and a half of cornmeal mix. Now, the ingredients that go in this for a cup and a half, I'm using a half cup of flour. Like that. 
when I say a dash of salt, one, two, three, that's three days. Then, let's see what the other, okay. We want your sugar. Let's see, where's my sugar? I'm going to put this in a, I'm going to do it like this first. Okay. Now I'm going to put it in this. This is a, this is a, this is a teaspoon, teaspoon. I'm going to pour this in this spoon another little dash anyway. right there is a teaspoon full of sugar now I don't think that's going to kill you at least it doesn't me. I'm going to put a couple extra dashes in. There we go. Because that wasn't quite a teaspoonful. One teaspoonful of sugar, dash of salt. Now, I've got to dig out my buttermilk. I forgot to get that out. It may take a minute or two. Because I'm not sure where it is. Yeah, way back here. It's always in, in the back. All right, here's my buttermilk. Shake it up a little bit. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put it in a cup because I don't know exactly how much I'll need. So we're going to start out with a cup full of buttermilk. Now while I'm doing this, I've got a skillet And one of these, you know, the corn stick. Love my little corn stick pan. So I've got my iron skillet, it's eight inches. And my, now I'm going to put them in the oven to heat. I want them good and hot. When I put my mix in. Okay, we're going to let it get hot while I'm mixing this. Now, I'm starting with a cup full. Now, I don't know if it'll take more than that or not, but we'll see. If it takes, if I've used too much buttermilk, I'll just add a little more milk. Now, I'm going to mix this up. All you've got there is a little bit of flour, a little bit of sugar, a dash of salt. Now see, that's a full cup. Let me show you. See how thick it is? All right. We're going to try with another half cup. I have a feeling it's going to take two cups of milk buttermilk. Now we'll mix it up good. You can watch me stir. Yeah, I've had this, this J-Dot bowl since 1954. It was a wedding gift. And little did I know that this thing was going to go up in price over the years, and I think Martha Stewart, one of them caused it to go up in price because she bought it all. You couldn't find it anywhere. All right, that's not gonna do it. That was a cup and a half, we're gonna try again. Cause I don't usually pick this much. Another half cup. That means I've used, I've used two cups of milk. Okay, here we go. This is going to do it this time. Two cups of milk. 
gonna stir it real good. Now I'm going to have to wait for the skillets to heat up. That's what it's important that you have a hot skillet so that it, the uh, grease sizzles. Now, this is still pretty thick. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a little water just to thin it down to where it looks like a uh, pancake mix. It won't take much. That's probably one or two tablespoons full. That's all it's going to take of the water. And you, because you want it a li little thinner than what you could see. You can see what I'm doing. I'll pour it out on the sink if I'm not careful. This is just about got it. See? Can you see? Okay. All right, I'm going to melt back in the refrigerator. refrigerator so full. I had it packed full before Christmas. I finally got down to eating all of my leftovers. So I decided I'm going to have a little beef stew and cornbread. Now I've got to get my good pot holder because this skillet's going to be hot. Pouring a little bit, you can see, just a little bit. Teaspoon, tablespoon, it doesn't matter which. I'm gonna get the other skillet out. I don't wanna burn myself. And I've already put the oil in both of them. I'll stir this. grease up in there. It just corn oil. Now I'm going to turn this around if I can so you can watch me. Let's see if I can get that on so you can see me put the okay this is the this is the skillet right here right here. Now pour part of this in here. It could have stayed in the oven a little bit longer. Let's see if I've got enough. Yeah. I think that will do it for this skillet. No, I didn't get my skillet quite hot enough because it's not sizzling. But that's okay. You see, you see my skillet? It's about half to two thirds full. It's going in the oven at 450 degrees. Now here's the fun part. It's not easy putting this in these little slots one at a time. Let me see if you can see this. I got it. Turn this around for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, I hope I've got enough for all of the slots. Right down through there. And that will spread out. Ooh, that one's kind of full. This little tray holds seven corn sticks. I used to have two of them, and stupid me, I gave one of them to my neighbor. I don't know why I did that, because anytime you're making 
one six, you need more than seven. One more. I figured that out exactly right. Now, can you see them? It's not going to be easy to do because it's hard to get hold of it without uh, getting my fingers in the mixture. So we're going to try it out here. I think I'm going to try another. This one will work better. I won't get all the mix on the... Alright, we're going to the oven with the second Now, I'm going to put this in the sink, wash it out a little bit, and then I'm going to show you my potato recipe. I'm going to use this same bowl. I just need to wash it out and get it ready. to turn the camera around so you're looking at what I'm doing instead of what I was doing. All right, let's see what we've got here. I need to wipe out this, clean it out a little bit so I can put, now, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but it works. It saves you having to peel potatoes, sliced potatoes, mashed potatoes to get this potato casserole. All of you have tried Bob Evans original mashed potatoes. That's what we're using. Now you just watch what I do. Let's see, I didn't get my casserole dish out. Gonna have to come around the camera here and get my casserole dish. I knew there'd be something I would forget. Whoops. Hang on there, folks. I'll be right back with you. And you can tell I'm not the professional. Okay, I'm coming back around. This time I'm going to hold the camera. Put my little dish over here to one side. Not going to be a big casserole. I don't need a big one just for me. Now, are you able to see what I'm doing? Let me turn this a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll get it. Take this off top of the potato. Goes in the sink. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to put it over here. See if we try Okay, I want it over here. I don't know where I want it, but just watch me. I've got a uh, two tablespoons of butter here. I'm going to melt in this little skillet. Turn the burner on so that it starts to melt. Now, I 
how to get the rest of my ingredients out of the fridge. Hope I don't forget my recipe. We're going to let this butter melt. I'm going to uh, put these mashed potatoes in this mixing bowl. Now, folks, this is just a simple thing. I mean, you can eat these potatoes the way they are. They're fine that way. But this just gives an added touch to what you would call a mashed potato casserole. I decided to do this myself. So, I'm going to sprinkle a little salt in. And a little pepper. Where is my pepper? Don't know what I did with it. Oh, look back here. I'll add some peppers. That'll do it. Now. We've got to let this set. Potatoes are ready. My butter is melting. I'm going to get over here. Turn the camera around again. Yeah, it's just about ready. And we're going to saute. Oh, I guess that's a half cup of onions. Looks like a half cup to me. Put that in, saute those. Okay, onion. That looks like enough onion. Now, I'll just add some celery. About the same amount, equal amount, celery and onion. Next, we're going to let that simmer. I think I've got enough butter in there. If I haven't, I'll add a little more. Now, while that is cooking, I'm going to look for my sour cream. It better be in here somewhere. I think I've got it. Let's see if this is sour cream. Hope it's not strawberries. I'm in the habit of freezing strawberries in sour cream containers. When I want sour cream, I never can find it. It isn't there at all. Strawberries. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. There's my sour cream. I'm just going to set it to one side. Stir these around a little bit. Let them cook a little bit. I want them tra translucent when I mix them with the potatoes. All that's going on. I need to find some cheese. This is cheese I have left over from, uh, what was it I made? Oh, my quiche. My Christmas Day quiche. So, we'll be adding the cheese later. I just want it handy so I don't forget it. A little more stirring of the onions and celery. You know, you've done this many times yourself, always sauteing celery, onions, and garlic. In fact, I think I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in 
think I've got this right here, and I'm going to add a little garlic. We're going to see if that'll flavor it some. I've got the garlic pod, but this is going to be quicker. Well, come on down. A lot of things don't work the way you want them to. There we go. That's about a teaspoon full of garlic. We'll mix that up a little bit. Just give it a little more flavor. I took this to my daughter's house once. I don't know if it was a holiday or something, and I had fixed this, and she had a friend there, and we invited her to sit down and eat with us. When she got through, she wanted to know how I fixed those mashed potatoes. When I told her they were Bob Evans mashed potatoes, she was shocked. She was having her daughter over for a holiday dinner, and she wanted to make the same mashed potatoes. I was, I was really surprised that she liked them well enough. And you don't have to tell people, you know, this is what I call a shortcut. You can call it your shortcut, too. In fact, when you think about having to peel all those potatoes, having to cook them, then having to mash them, this is the way to go. So by the time I do all that, I'm out of the mood to eat. I'd rather go out and get Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, this is going to be ready in just a minute or two. I hope y'all had really good uh, Christmas holiday. I think I told you that uh, my daughter and my granddaughter were here. and It was kind of quiet, but we had fun. They took pictures. They, they're beautiful girls, I'm telling you that right now. And, and I'm not bragging because I'm the mother and grandmother. I'm telling it like it is. Those girls are pretty. So, I'm going to turn this back around. Yeah, there's my, there's my J-Dot bowl. My mixing bowl. Wouldn't take anything for this bowl. Funny how you get attached to things like this and you start liking them ain't let go of them. I don't know, I think I'll put another dash of salt. I'm a salt person. You can count on me. Now, first, you got to remind me that I've got cornbread in the oven, and I don't want it to get too brown, because that's just going to ruin the whole purpose of me fixing that cornbread. I'm going to get a pan out here. I saved these pans from, these pans were, uh, had pie crust in them. They come in handy sometimes, so I'm going to use that to put my cornbread in. That way it's got a lid to it and I can put it in the refrigerator later. Now, I'm about ready to add the onions and the celery. Take a look at the onions and the celery. See, you know what onions and celery look like when they've been sauteed in butter. We're going to pour this right in here. It's got enough butter in it, two tablespoons, that I don't have to add anymore. I could, but I'm not going to. There goes my onions and celery right in my potatoes. You may not call this casserole, but I do. 
Okay. Let's stir this up. Get it stirred up good. You'll be surprised how tasty it is. Of course, I kind of like the Bob Evans uh, mashed potatoes anyway. But usually the package is too much for me and I keep it too long and I have to end up throwing part of it away. I hate having to throw away food, but that's what happens. So there's my potatoes. And what's next? Sour cream. But first, I'm going to open the oven door. See how things are looking. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm going to lie here a little bit. Open the oven door. Whew! That steam always... No, not quite ready yet. We're going to play around here long enough to let the cornbread get done. Need another spoon here. Now, I'm not putting a lot of sour cream because I don't like a heavy sour cream taste. You see what I've got here? Nice big spoonful. I may add just a little bit more. That's going to do it. Now, this gets blended with my mashed potatoes. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you what, my daughter put our pictures on a beautiful table setting website. You need to check on that. It's a really, really nice website. And she put our Christmas pictures on them. And the last time I looked, there were 4,300 views of We Three Girls. I couldn't believe it. But it was the story she told that made it so appealing. So, if you ever want to go on to the Beautiful Table Settings website, check it out. You can request to join it. And it got oh, about 140,000 members. Unbelievable to me. Okay, sour cream, you go back over here. And out comes the cheese. The cheese will come next. A little, I hope this casserole dish is big enough. In fact, I'm going to see if uh, I need a little butter in the bottom. What have I done with my butter? Well, we'll see. We'll try it this way. I'll just take the end of this. And I'll rub it around my bottom of my dish. You know. Moisten it a little bit and it even gets it a little bit more butter flavor. So that's just enough. See, yeah, that'll make it better. Make it a little more taste. I love buttered taste. Oh. Okay, butter back in the fridge. Now, 
Here we go. Can you see? I hope you can. Okay, let's move it down a little bit. Get that out of the way. I'm ready to dump these potatoes in this dish. bit more pepper. This makes it look pretty. And the cheese. I don't know how this is going to work, but one of these is Gouda and the other one is Swiss. And we're just going to mix them together and see what happens. But this is the melting kind of cheese. We'll give it plenty. Spread it out a little bit with my fingers. Now let's add a little Swiss cheese to it. We'll find out what it's going to be like. Okay, another look at the cornbread. Let me see. About two more minutes and that'll do it. And we'll be able to put it here on top of the stove. Get my dishes over here, my garbage. Rachel Ray always has a great old big mixing bowl on her countertop where she throws all of her leftovers in the garbage and stuff. I don't do that. I throw mine in a leftover Kroger's grocery bag. That's good enough for me. There's a little bit of cheese left. I'm going to put that on a grilled cheese sandwich. Are you still with me? I'm going to turn this around. I want to get this right. I wish I knew how to do this kind of stuff. I don't know beans about cameras and how to work them. We're going to get it turned around so that you see the cornbread when I put it on the stove. I'll get sour cream back in the fridge. Now you saw how much sour cream I put in. It's just about, well, two tablespoons, well, I guess, quarter of a cup. That's plenty. This goes in the sink. Oops. I 
I'm going to go ahead and take these out. I don't want them to bake, over bake. My glasses always get sweaty when I'm taking something out of the oven. Now you're going to get to see. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Temperature down to about 375 to 400, and I'm putting my casserole. See the casserole, how pretty it looks. In fact, I thought about putting a little bit of parsley on top, but I don't think it needs it. It'll do just fine like it is. All right, let's watch here. I'm gonna do this. Watch my cornbread. Look at that, whoo! Did you see that flip? Didn't stick. And it's pretty. It is pretty. Take a look. I'm gonna burn myself. Isn't that something to look at? And I'll tell you what, it's gonna be just as good as it looks. Okay. Over here we've got our corn sticks. I'm gonna put them in this pan. Drop them in this pan, turn this around. So I don't burn my hand. There's nothing better than corn stick, especially if you're eating um, veg good vegetable soup. This one has to stick a little bit. Turn them over. Always turn the cornbread over and your corn sticks. See, the reason this is sticking is because I didn't have the skillet hot enough. Otherwise, it would just, these would just pop right out. Keep that in mind. You want the grease to sizzle when you're making cornbread. That's what gives you that good crust. Whew. I can't wait to eat one of these. Yep, kind of over the top, a little too much in this food there. Oh well, y'all, just bear with me. We'll get these things out of here. And this is what I'm going to have to suffer in a few minutes. I, uh, I had my potatoes done. The carrots and celery are cooking in the hot celery. Onion. Carrots and onions. Okay. I like the looks of those. Well, I'm going to dump them out on the floor if I'm not careful. But take a look. Isn't that pretty? Don't you like the looks of that? Here's the one that ran over a little bit. Here's another one. And this is the little one that didn't get enough in. Mm. It's crisp. Really crisp. Now, I think I'll take the knife. I'm going to cut into the cornbread.
not getting the right dish. Ah, this will do. It's good to let it set just uh, two or three minutes before you cut it out. It's still a little bit soft. If you let it sit a little longer, it won't fall apart on you. Come on. We'll get it out of here. I may have taken it up too soon. I'm thinking I did. Okay. do anything right. Yes, yeah, a little bit. I think we just stayed in about two more minutes. It fell apart a little bit, but you can still see. Let me see what it looks like. I'm gonna break it up. I'm gonna break a piece. Ooh, too hot. See what it looks like inside? Get it cool enough that it doesn't burn my tongue. Let's see. Now, let me tell you this. That teaspoon of the sugar, you wouldn't know it was in there. So those people who think that you're gonna ruin your cornbread with a teaspoon full of sugar, they need to try making it that way first before they open them out. You're gonna find out what happened. That teaspoon of the sugar cuts the buttermilk taste. If you don't like the taste of buttermilk itself, that's the purpose of sugar. You still got the same cornbread. Yep, you got the cornbread. And here it is. Look good to me. Now I'm gonna to have to wait a few minutes, probably about 15 minutes, for my uh, mashed potato casserole. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. I don't want it to brown on top. Oh, about 375 is what you'd want to heat it on. How's that for a, a cooking show? I'll tell you this, I'm anxious to eat some of that beef. That's shaved beef. I never bought shaved beef before, so I thought, well, I'll give it a try. I'm not sure I'll buy it again, but I sure didn't want to throw it away, so I'm I'm cooking it up with the onions and the carrots and with the cornbread and the mashed potato casserole. I think I'll have a pretty good meal. I'll be eating it in just a few minutes. Then I'm going to watch my TV series I've been watching all week. And I'm telling you, those series drag on and on and on and on. And you keep watching because you're afraid you're going to miss something. Yep, that's what I do. And I'm sitting there at midnight still watching. So the news goes on by. The weather reports go on by. 
I don't have any idea if it's 30 degrees or 75 degrees outside. I'm watching the series. Folks, I hope you're going to have a nice New Year's Eve. And I really, really hope and pray that the New Year has good things in store for us. We need, we need something good. We need to be happy for a change. We have lost sleep. We have worried. We've gone through casualties. We've gone through so much illness in the last two years. We need a break. We need a break. And I will be thankful for anything, anything that can make life better for you, for me, and for our families. So thank you for watching this program. And I'll be back with you later.